Hello and welcome back to Tinker Talks Guns. Today we're going to talk about the Taurus Model 80 in somewhat modified form in this case. Um, Taurus has been around for quite a while now, but they really didn't come into the American consciousness until, I don't know, late 70s, early 1980s. And the Model 80 was one of the first guns they introduced. It was a K-frame-ish 38 Special, and uh, externally, you could be forgiven for thinking it's a copy of a K-frame Smith & Wesson, but in reality, it really kind of isn't. Now, Smith & Wesson and Taurus were both owned by Bangor Punta Corporation at some point. So there is some commonality there, but they're not really a clone. And um, we'll take a closer look at this on the tabletop. It's unload and show clear. No cartridges in the holes. So we are safe. Now, as I said, you could be forgiven for thinking this is a straight up clone of a Smith & Wesson, but there are internal differences. And as you can see, this one resembles a five screw Smith & Wesson, but inside it's a different story. Um, this gun does use both a Smith & Wesson style hammer block based on the trigger return assembly and a, let's see if I can show this, a transfer bar which in this case is sort of an anti-transfer bar. It uh, blocks the hammer from moving forward far enough for the firing pin to strike the uh, cartridge. So there's sort of a double safety there, and it is a very different and kind of interesting transfer bar system. But some of the other differences between these and a Smith & Wesson make it a bit of a nightmare to put back together. So. I'll show you that sometime when I am feeling uh, <laughs> greater intestinal fortitude. Now, in its original form, this is a 4-inch barrel fixed sight, and it is a trough-style rear sight, which is about as good as trough-style rear sights on mid-frame revolvers are. <clears throat> but also, this has cuts, serrations across here, and down the middle of the groove, which is square bottom instead of round bottom, um, to reduce glare. I'm not sure that's ever actually been an issue, but it is there. Now, this gun, as I said, I've modified. I paid, I don't know, three or four years ago, five years ago, I don't know. I paid 150 bucks for this gun. So I felt pretty comfortable about doing just pretty much whatever the hell I felt like to it. And I used it as a test bed for a lot of experimentation. Um, as you can see, I've bobbed the hammer and it does have serrations on top so that you can thumb cock it by starting it slightly with the trigger. But I don't really recommend it and don't really see the need. I also shortened the barrel to two and three quarter inches and made and installed a new front sight with 40 line per inch serrations cut on the back and painted orange because I like that. Also, these are a square butt and I made this one not a square butt because I was experimenting and you know, for 150 bucks, why not? I also experimented with stipling on the back strap, which gives a very good secure grip. I have not stipled under the trigger guard yet, but I probably will. I've also relieved the trigger guard on the right so that from the safe position, my trigger finger can move directly to the trigger. The trigger, which is quite narrow, was originally grooved. I've smoothed that out. And I made, of course, custom antler grips because antler is cool. And I added a BK grip adapter, and this is just the standard grip adapter for a K-Frame Smith & Wesson. Um, one difference that is jumps out more than most of the others between this and the Smith & Wesson 
are these grooves in the uh, flutes. That's what they're called. And this one is also relieved so that it won't stick in holsters, which is kind of an interesting touch. And um, the combination of the handmade grip and the BK grip adapter gives a really nice grip on the gun, but it still remains compact and uh, good for concealment. And one of the things I experimented on with this, which is how I found out more than I ever wanted to know about the innards of this thing, was I did a full trigger job. And I did not interfere with the mainspring, which unlike Smith & Wesson's uh, K-frames, which have a flat spring, this has a coil spring. And it does sort of give the lie to the idea that a coil spring cannot produce a good smooth trigger because after the trigger job, according to my friend Leah's trigger gauge, the double action pull on this gun is six and a half pounds. And it is ultra, ultra smooth thanks to the trigger job. It was never bad, but it wasn't great. And um, this is a really nice gun to shoot. And again, as you can see, the sights are nothing special but very easy to shoot this gun, very easy to put rounds on target quickly. So it's a really nice gun for all of that. And the problem with the reassembly is that most revolvers, they have the hand that advances the cylinder and that's got a little internal coil spring to keep it pressed forward so it can do its job. Not so the Taurus. The Taurus has a spring plunger in a groove that the hand travels in, in this side plate. And it is a righteous pain in the ass to get back in place. You can see this hole right here. And the trick is you have to assemble the gun and then use a piece of wire to push through this hole to push the plunger back past the hand and it's just seriously annoying to do. But it does work and it's actually a very good design. It's certainly uh, certainly very robust. But again, as I say, one of the consistent failings with Taurus is the quality of their metallurgy. Oh, and I also did a nice conical crown on the barrel. Anyway, it's a great old gun. It shoots super well, and it has been, aside from the strangely breaking transfer bar, it has been a very good, reliable gun. And with that six and a half pound ultra smooth trigger, it is just really pleasant to shoot. And uh, not really what you'd expect from an old Taurus. And by the way, how old is this Taurus? We don't know because Taurus, it's old enough that Taurus could not help me figure out when it was made. <laughs> so, anyway, you can pick these up for $150 or $200. And, um, you know, it's genuinely worth thinking about, especially if you want a gun to experiment on. With the revolvers, at least, Taurus has never suffered in terms of design or even innovation. But again, they have been consistently let down by their quality control in the past. Some of their revolvers, the Model 85 have, to be specific, have been consistently um, strong and reliable. Uh, this gun has not been overly problematic. Yes, the transfer bar broke, but the gun's something over 40 years old and was never an expensive gun to begin with, so I, I can give it that one. As it is, it's a terrific gun, it's a great shooter, lots of fun, and if I were still carrying mid-sized revolvers, I wouldn't feel at all bad about carrying this one. In fact, it uh, probably has the nicest trigger of any of my revolvers. So, and as I said, these are not 
expensive, or at least they shouldn't be. But you have to understand when you're buying them that you're taking your chances. Now for me, I like to work on guns, I like to mess around with them, 150 bucks, I'll take my chances. <clears throat> your mileage may vary. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. And if you like the video, please hit like and subscribe. If you comment, that helps too, because likes, subscriptions, and comments are the only way that YouTube knows anyone is paying attention. If you wish to offer me more concrete support, there's a link to my Patreon in the description below. Anyway, I hope this finds you well. Stay safe, take care, and we'll talk to you again real soon.